everybody, and welcome back to some more League of Legends uh, with Pongor Stormfiend. Continuing on with our newbie guide here. So, last time we looked at Fighter. This time we're moving on to Mage. Mage is uh, does what's called the Ability Power Carry roll. Basically, similar to the Marksman or Attack Damage Carry, your job is to basically bring the damage to your team. Um, mages generally do either burst damage or sustain damage, um, although every mage has the potential to burst. So, that is a thing. So, basically what a mage does is, depending on the mage, you either stay in the back and stay safe, or you stay in the back and poke, or you eliminate a single target, or you initiate like, mages are very wide in that variety, so there's a lot of options. Anyways, um, I'll go over each option for everyone. So, the very first champion in the mage list is Ari. Ari is a very fun champion, so I've heard. Um, I'm not a big fan of Ari myself. Uh, she's just not a champion for me. So, one of the things that Ari has going for her is she is super mobile. And she's super mobile because of the way her skills work. Her first skill is a skill shot that goes out and then comes back and does uh, magic damage on the way out and true damage on the way back. The thing is you can shoot this out and then move and it'll come to you so you can harass people easy with it. It makes you very pokey. Your W is just an active ability that does damage to, uh, and to nearby enemies. It prioritizes champions I do believe. And then your E is a skill shot that's a that's a uh, charm, which basically makes them unable to do something and makes them slowly walk towards you. So already you're seeing that pretty much all her abilities can be fire, and then she can just keep moving. Finally, her ultimate. What this does is that it will um, it sh does uh, does s like basically she dashes in her direction, fires out three bolts to the three nearest uh, enemies. It prioritizes champions. And she can dash two more times. Really, really great ability. Again, makes her super, super mobile. So Ari is a very fun champion to play and very safe and very strong. Moving on from her, we have Anivia. Now, um, Anivia is kind of sit in the back and play safe. Although you end up going to a more medium range when you actually go into fights and commit. And what does Anivia do? Well, first off, her Q is a skill shot that goes out, and uh, it it uh, passes through enemies and deals damage. And then upon either reaching the end of its range or by being activated again, the uh, the the skill shot will explode and deal damage as well as uh, stun targets. Now it also slows, and the good thing about this ability is that. If you detonate it right after it passes through an enemy, they'll take the damage twice. Moving on from that, her W is, puts a wall out, an impassable wall, so you can block off enemies with it or force them into awkward positions. Really good. Her E is a nuke ability, and what this does is to targets that are considered chilled, which means any slow effect, um, it, it will do triple... Is it triple or double? It is... It's double. But basically it's a single target nuke ability. It doesn't do too much unless it's double by having that chill effect. But it hits really hard when it does. Finally, her ultimate is a toggle on and off ability. And it's an area target. And it puts a area of uh, this like chilling wind. And it deals damage and slows enemy in enemies inside of it. So enemy is a really strong champion. Also her passive lets her when she dies. She goes into an egg form with full health and uh, full health and uh, reduced armor and magic resist, and then after a period, if she isn't killed in her egg, she respawns with uh, remaining health uh, equivalent to the egg. So, very interesting and fun champion. Next we have Annie. Annie is a very easy to pick up mage and a very underrated mage. She snowballs very hard because she has a lot of upfront and really strong burst. And she has a really good passive, and her passive, what it does is every four spell class, on the four, like every three, and then on the four spell cast, she uh, she will stun her target with her next spell. And uh, her single, her Q is just a single target nuke. Her W is just a conal uh, damage ability. 
Her E is a shield that does damage to attackers as well as gives her armor a magic boost. And finally, her ultimate is a AoE nuke that does damage in an area. And you want to trigger this with your stun. So you can like drop it on a team, hit like three or four people, and stun them. So Annie's a very fun to pick up and easy to play mage. Moving on from her, we have Bran, the Burning Vengeance. Um, so Bran, Bran is a champion that I'm not, I, I play him a lot, I'm good at him, but I don't think he's a good champion. And here is why. For Bran to do good, you have to land a lot of your abilities. Pretty much all of them are skill shots with the exception of your E and ultimate. And even then, your ultimate is very luck dependent. And the problem with this is that even when you land everything, your burst isn't that amazing compared to other champions. Like, it's about equivalent. You basically have to jump through hoops to get the same as other champions. And I don't like that. So let's talk about his ability. Uh, like, his, his, uh, his whole mechanic is based around this blaze passive. And what it does is, whenever you hit an enemy with an ability, you apply blaze to him, which deals damage over 4 seconds. And it's uh, percent health. And it, it's strong, don't get me wrong. But the problem is, is like, you have a single target stun, but it's a skill shot, and it requires a blaze on the target. So it's very, very, like, you need to have these requirements before I'll actually work. Your W is a pillar that does okay damage. It does more if they have blaze. Your E is an ability that does damage, and then also does damage to nearby enemies if it has uh, blaze on the initial target. Finally, your ultimate just bounces uh, up to five times. Um, it prioritizes champions. It says, I will tell you with a great certainty, it does in fact not prioritize champions. And it prioritizes if they have blaze. And again, I can guarantee it does not prioritize. So, I, I like, I like, I'm good at Bran. And he's a good champion because not everyone knows what he does. But compared to other mages, he's very lackluster. Um, moving on from Bram, we have Cassiopeia. Now, Cassiopeia is a very, very strong mage. Her one downside is that lately, people are favoring long-range mages over the shorter-range ones. And Cassie is a very short-range mage, and she's a very squishy mage. Um, but she's very strong because of the way her damage works. Uh, her passive lets her basically, every time she casts a spell... Uh, Subsequent spellcasts cost 10 less, or 10% less, and the stats up to 5 times. Her Q does damage, and then also applies a dot to the target, and then also gives her movement speed. Very good ability. Her W is an area of effect uh, poison cloud that slowly expands over the duration. It does damage in the area as well as slow. Now what gives her a lot of damage are the next two abilities. Her ultimate is a conal, uh, conal nuke, and... Targets facing her get stunned, and targets facing away get slowed. But this is such a great ability, and the stun is very long, and it lets you kill people very quickly. Finally, her, her next ability is Twin Fang, which is her E. And what this does is that if your target has poison on them, and for the record, poison is counted as Teemo's stuff as well as Singe, um, this ability only has a 0 0.5 second cooldown. So you basically, you hit them with your Q, you, you can E... Uh, you can e-spam them, and then while on top of doing more Q damage, so you have a lot of really quick burst potential, and you can really nuke someone down in the duration of this stun on your ultimate. And she's a really strong mage because of the fact that you can basically shut down an enemy team for so long with Petrifying Gaze, her ultimate. But she's such a short range, too. Anyways, moving on from her, we have Elise. Um, Elise is a... A um, an interesting champion. Her ultimate lets her switch between two forms. So she has a spider form as well as a human form. And her abilities do different things based on her form. Her passive gives her spider links when she's in spider form. She's also melee in spider form instead of range. Her spider form also gives her additional magic damage on attacks as well as uh, um, as well as movement speed. In addition to that, her Q does percent health damage of their current HP. Her W just sends out a spider that explodes and does AoE. It's not that great, really. And then in her spider form, it gives her attack speed as well as heal. This is a little bit better. Her E is a is a skill shot uh, stun, and it also reveals the first enemy uh, hit with it. It's an okay ability. 
the other part of that is repel in spider form, which uh, she leaps up in the air and becomes untargetable, and then she can leap down on targets in a fairly large radius. This is a really good ability for avoiding stuff. Um, now, the big thing is that the way her Q works is that in human form, again, it's a percent health of current damage, and then in spider, it's a bite with a fairly um, small range, and it does uh, percent missing health. So you basically poke someone down and then execute them with your Q. Uh, she's a very strong, strong champion. Um, I don't claim to be the best with her. I, I wish I was. I really like her, but I'm pretty bad at her, to be quite honest. Anyways, moving on from Elise, we have Fiddlesticks. So Fiddlesticks is a really strong initiator as well as follow-up champion because his ultimate does a ton of damage. Um, you might hear the internet police, uh, they're coming for me. I guess they, they don't like me talking about Fiddlesticks. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, uh, basically, so, Fiddles, Fiddles is ultimate. What it does is after a short channel, he blinks to the location that you target. It's a fairly short range blink, so keep that in mind. And then he starts dealing damage to all enemies around him. In addition, he can still cast his abilities. And his abilities make him a very formidable foe. First off, his his Q is a terrify ability. It appears a, a champion for a duration. The duration is fucking long. At max rank, it is three seconds. So basically, that target is probably dead. His W is a drain. You have to channel it, but you drain health from the target and give it back to you, and it does a ton of damage. Finally, his E is a is a abil ability that bounces around to uh, five targets, I think it is, and it silences each of them for a short duration. So, he has a lot of really good ways to shut down a champion, and also does a fair amount of burst. Moving on from Fiddles, we have Gregus. Now, Gregus is a melee um, caster, so keep that in mind. Gregus is an, a, innately fairly tanky, and he has a very interesting kit in that everything is, uh, with the exception of one ability, everything's generally on a short delay for damage. So, Although you do, well, no, that's a lie, because you only have one ability that's on the delay. Anyways, so what are his abilities? Well, his passive is Happy Hour. On ability use, Gragas takes a drink, restoring 2% of his max health over a couple seconds. His Q is that he throws a barrel to a target location. After a duration or upon being reactivated, the cast explodes and deals damage in the area around it, as well as slowing attack speed uh, by, uh, by a percent to enemies hit. His W is a channel ability, and you regain mana over the duration, as well as gain attack damage and reduce incoming damage. So, very strong ability. Your E is a short range dash that goes over a lot of walls. It also does damage to the enemy hit and slowed. Now, the thing about this ability is that it does more damage to a single target, but splits the damage to multiple targets. So, if you hit one person with it, you'll get more burst. If you hit, if you hit Several people, then the damage gets split. Finally, your ultimate is Explosive Cast. Fairly long range target ability. Throws a cask. Does fairly large burst damage. And then also knocks back enemies from the burst impact, from the burst area. So, very good at disrupting team fights. Overall, Greg is fairly decent a, uh, ability power mage. Uh, moving on from Greg, we have Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger is a champion that's very weak at the moment. He's fun, but he's weak, and he's based around this concept of using uh, turrets. So basically, you can summon one turret at first rank, and then at uh, at third rank, you get a second turret. And these turrets deal a lot of uh, damage, and they're very underrated, but they're very easy to kill. Is the problem, and they're they're very hard to set up quickly in a team fight if it just gets escalated quickly. Um, your W is a probably the longest range poke in the game, I think. And basically what it does is it shoots out three rockets to the nearest enemies. So it does not prioritize champion. It is literally the three nearest enemies. So you can poke very well with this ability. And it, again, it has probably the longest poke in, uh, longest range in the game for poke, I do believe. Moving on from that, we have his E, which is a target ability. It's a fairly slow moving uh, projectile. But enemies hit at the, at the dead center of it will be stunned. And enemies outside that dead center just get uh, blinded for a short duration. Finally, his ultimate is upgrade. 
and what upgrade does is it makes your E go faster, it makes you have 5 rockets instead of 3, and finally it upgrades your turrets, immediately restoring full health to them, and then makes them also slow and increases their damage uh, done. So, he's a very fun champion, but again, he's a very weak champion at the moment because of the way his kit is. Moving on from Hymer, we have Karma. Uh, Karma is sort of a utility uh, mage in that she brings a lot of utility to team fights and stuff. Um, Karma doesn't have an ultimate, instead she has something called Mantra, and what Mantra does is when you activate it, it goes on cooldown, and it gives you a buff for a short duration, and what this does is that uh, your abilities will do additional things. Um, for example, your Q is a skill shot that just does damage upon impacting uh, in an area, so it's very good for harassing, very good for farming. If you have your uh, R for it, it will deal more damage as well as put an area afterwards, and after a short delay, the area will explode, dealing more damage. It also slows enemies in the area, so it's very good for harassing and, again, farming. Her W is a tether that does damage, and then after a duration, if the tether isn't broken, then it will also uh, snare the target. It also slows the target that it's applied to. If you have this uh, with your R, it will restore health to you over the duration, and then also restore health again once the snare triggers. Um, her E is a shield that increases movement speed, and then if you R it, when you first use the shield, it will deal damage to enemies in the area around it. So, Karma's a very good utility mage. I think she's a very underrated mage. Uh, I'm surprised she's not played more, but I think it's just because people really haven't picked her up and played with her. Moving on from Karma, we have Karthus. Karthus is a very strong and very fun mage. Um, he is probably one of the funnest ultimates and passives in the game. His passive is called uh, Death Divide. Um, for 7 seconds after dying, Karthus can continue to cast spells. Um, he can't move, but he can continue to cast spells. So, basically, once you die in a team fight, you're still useful. Your Q is called Lay Waste. It does damage in a small area. And uh, if it hits only a single target, it does uh, more damage. Your W is a wall similar to Anivia's, except that it's passable. It also slows en enemies that walk through it and reduces their magic resistance. Your E is called the file. Passively, it gives you mana regen for killing enemies, and then you can activate it to deal damage in uh, in an area around you as well as slowly drain your mana per second while it's turned on. And your ultimate is Requiem. After channeling for three seconds, you deal damage to all enemy champions. It is awesome but it's very counterable that's the thing about it but basically the way your defile works you just jump into a team fight in the middle of it uh, use Zhonyas if you can if not you basically if they kill you cool you continue to cast them and then you end it with your Requiem if it looks like it's going to be useful. Karthus is very fun and very strong although he's, he's, he's very weak early game but he picks it up quickly next we have Kennen um, Kennen is a very strong mage. He doesn't use mana, he uses um, energy, so he's basically got infinite uh, harass and poke and stuff in lane. Um, basically, the way Kennen's uh, kit works is that his passive has something called Mark of Storm, and once the target gets three marks, they get stunned. And every one of his abilities applies marks. Um, his Q is a skill shot that does damage, and it applies a mark. His uh, W makes him go like into a super lightning mode and he runs fairly fast. He can pass through enemies and he does damage to enemies he passes through as well as nearby enemies and then also applies a mark to them. And then his E lets him activate it to uh, to do um, uh, damage to all targets uh, marked by his uh, uh, mark of the storm and then also adds another mark. Um, his W also passively deals extra damage and adds a mark of the storm to his target with basic attacks every few attacks. Finally, his ultimate is Slicing Maelstrom. Kennen summons a storm that strikes all enemies nearby and uh, basically applies marks to them and then it will stun them. It's very He's a very strong uh, initiator or follow-up champion. Um, moving on from Kenim, we have Lissandra. Lissandra is a very strong uh, uh, mage. 
she's very good at shutting down a single target. And basically, the way her kit works is her passive lets her get a free cast every, uh, every, like, 17 seconds or so. Her Q is basically a spammable poke ability. It does damage and slows movement speed of targets hit. Her W lets her deal damage to all enemies around her and then roots them. Her E, uh, does damage. It's a skill shot that goes out. It does damage and then you can reactivate the ability, um, while it's in flight or for like a brief period after it uh, ends its uh, ends its range to teleport to it. And finally, her ultimate is Frozen Tomb. You can either target yourself or an enemy. If you target an enemy, it stuns them and then deals damage to them as well as the enemies around them. Or you can target yourself becoming invulnerable and dealing damage to enemies around you. So overall, her kit is very strong and she's very good at nuking that one single target with that ult. Moving on from her, we have Lux. Um, what Lux does is that her her passive applies a mark whenever she hits someone with an ability, and if you auto attack them, it triggers the mark dealing extra magic damage. Her Q is a snare, a skill shot snare. If it hits an enemy, it will hit uh, an additional nearby enemy if they're close enough, and also snare them. Her W sends out a shield that shields you initially going out, and then shields you again as it comes back in, and it shields allies as well if they're hit. Your E sends out a uh, fairly moderate AOE, um, uh, like Orb of Light, and it stays on the ground for a short duration. Um, and then after a delay, it'll either explode or you can activate it to explode it, and it also slows enemies in the area. Finally, your ultimate is a fairly long-range laser. Basically, you shoot out the skill shot laser. It's a fairly lengthy and... Uh, wide laser. It's good for securing kills in lane or in other lanes. Uh, moving on from her, we have Malzahar. I'm not a fan of Malzahar because of his ultimate. I just want to say that front. Your passive lets you summon a Voidling every four spell casts. Your Q is a skill shot, and after a short delay, uh, it does damage in a line. It's sort of like a wall ability, it's the same kind of concept as a skill shot. And after delay, it'll shoot out the line that, and it does, does damage and silences. Your W puts a zone on the ground, and enemies standing in it take uh, percent health damage. Very, very strong ability. Your E puts a dot on a target, and if the, if the target dies while the dot is on them, the dot will bounce to a nearby enemy target, and every time it bounces, it also restores mana to you. And now here's my problem with Malzahar, this ultimate. What this ultimate does is it suppresses the target and you channel and do damage over a duration to them but it also roots you like you're stuck there channeling and I don't like it it makes it very situational in team fights <clears throat> moving on from Maltara we have Morgana Morgana's passive just gives her spell vamp which restores life her Q is a skill shot uh, snare her W puts a area on the ground that does damage over time and also reduces uh, magic for this. Her E puts a shield on the target, and while the shield holds, it makes them immune to CC. Very, very strong ability. Her ultimate is called Soul Shackles. Um, all enemies nearby to Morgana get a tether on them, and it does damage initially as well as slows them. And if after a short delay, if they're still near within range of her and still tethered, they will take the damage again and get sna or get stunned. So very strong initiation tool, like Flash, Ulti, and then Zanya's. Very, very good. Next we have Oriana. Oriana is another very good initiator follow-up champion. She's another sort of utility uh, um, champion instead of a full-on AP mage. Although she does bring damage, like, don't get me wrong. Her passive is called Clockwork Windup. Just lets her uh, basic attacks deal additional magic damage. Her Q sends out her ball. Now, basically, she all her damage is focused around this this object called the ball. It is sort of like this independent object that you have to keep track of. This sends the ball to a location and does damage to enemies it passes through or that are at the area when it arrives. Your W is called Command Dissonance. What it does is it does damage to enemies uh, in an area around the ball as well slows them or speeds up allies in the area. Your E is uh, protect. The ball comes back to you or your target and shields them, as well as uh, gives the target it's attached to uh, magic resistant armor. Finally, your ultimate is called Shockwave. 
what it does is that the ball, after after a very brief delay, it will deal massive damage and pull all targets towards it in an area around it. So again, you can see how she's sort of very good at following up and initiating. Like you throw your E on to say Hecarim, he goes in and then you just follow it up. Very strong mage. Next we have Ryze. I'm not a big fan of Ryze. Uh, after his nerfs, I don't think he's that great. Basically, you build Ryze one of two ways, either ability power or mana Ryze. Mana Ryze is more tanky and can sort of hyper carry. Uh, although with the nerfs, I'm not sure about that anymore. Um, basically, his abilities are pretty simplistic. He's a very easy to pick up mage. His passives make all spellcasts reduce uh, the cooldown by one second on all spellcasts. His Q just does damage to a single target. It also um, it's also very on a very short cooldown, so it's sort of spammable, and it passively gives you cooldown reduction. Your W is a single is a targeted snare ability. It deals damage. Um, your E sends out a uh, like the sort of uh, boomerang type ability. It's made of arcane energy. It bounces between targets and reduces magic resist to targets hit. It can bounce to you, but it doesn't deal damage to you, so you can bounce between yourself and an enemy to deal damage and reduce magic with this. Finally, your ultimate's desperate power. When you activate it, you gain spell vamp, and all of your abilities do area of effect damage, and then you also gain movement speed. So, fairly easy and simplistic mage. Don't think he's that good anymore, though. Next, we have my favorite mage, Swain, the Master Tactician. Anyways... Swain is a sort of tanky, sustaining mage, and all his abilities are dots, basically. So, what does Swain do? His passive is carry on renewal. He gets mana back when he kills an enemy. Um, his Q is called Decrepify. He shoots out his bird, and it will tether to an enemy, dealing damage to them and slowing them. They can move away from the bird to break the tether. Um, his E is, or his W is called Nevermore. It's a target area ability. After a brief delay, uh, Talons spring forth from the ground and deal damage and root the target. His E is Torment, and what Torment does is it's a target dot ability, and it increases damage the enemy takes while on them. And basically, how you want to do is you always want to E, Q, and then W, so you can guarantee W will land because of the slow, and you get the damage boost because of your E. Finally, your ultimate's Ravenous Flock. You turn into a giant demon bird, and then you send these crows out that deal damage to three nearby enemies, though it does prioritize champions, and then the birds will return to you, healing you for some of the damage they deal. Now, these will heal more from uh, champions than they will from minions. Love Swain. Next, we have Syndra. Syndra is a fairly strong, albeit underrated mage. Although she is fairly squishy and hard to play. So what does Cinder do? Well, her, her passive is transcendent. And basically when her abilities get to max rank, they deal additional things. Her Q deals 15% more damage to champions. Her W slows uh, longer. Her E um, makes the width of it uh, in, go up by 50%. And then finally, her ultimate increases its range by 75 so it's 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 a pretty bad passive because it's so lackluster like it's not interesting it's just passiveness literally it is a passive passive um what her q does is that after a short duration it deals damage and in an area and then also summons a dark sphere and you can interact with dark spheres um your w is called force of will you can pick up a dark spear with this or an enemy and basically it tethers it to you and it follows you around for a duration and then you can reactivate the ability to throw the orb or the enemy to an area and uh, deal damage to them as well as slow enemies hit. Now you can't pick up champions but you can pick up minions and the thing to note about this is that for, it, uh, for minions this includes turrets. This includes Zyra plants. This also includes Tibbers the bear. So keep that in mind. You can also pick up buffs and stuff as well. Finally, your E is called Scatter the Weak. Um, 
Syndra knocked enemies and Dark Spears back, dealing magic damage uh, to uh, to enemies. And enemies hit by Dark Spears become stunned. So very, very good ability, um, especially when you couple it with this. Unleash power. Syndra bombards an enemy champion with all of her Dark Spears, dealing a ton of damage and more damage for each Dark Spear thrown at the enemy. And then it also summons a bunch of Dark Spears. Now, if you use this and then follow up Scatter of the Week, you can pretty much stun the entire enemy team. Very strong and very underrated. Next, we have Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate, again, really strong and very powerful. And he's really powerful because of this ultimate called Destiny. What this does is that you can teleport uh, in a fairly long range. Uh, so it lets you sort of, like if you go, for example, if you're mid lane, if you go to like a little bit past the mid lane bushes on either side, you can get either top or bottom really easily. And what you do with this is that you use this ability here, which is called pick a card. And what it does is it cycles through three cards, a red, a gold, and a blue. And uh, each of them does a different thing. Red will slow enemies in an area when it hits a target. Blue restores mana and deals damage to a single target. And gold will stun, da uh, stun enemies and deal damage to a single target. Or stun the enemy and deal damage to them. So what you do is you get a gold card, teleport like behind an enemy in either top or bottom, and then stun them and let your team basically pick up a free kill. Twisted Fate has a lot of presence, and that's a great thing. In addition to that, his Q is basically it throws out three cards in, uh, in the set direction that deal damage to enemies they pass through. And then his E lets him do extra magic damage every third, uh, every four attacks, and as well gives him a uh, passive attack speed increase. Next we have Vigar. Vigar is basically the I don't want your carries to live champion. And he does this because of this ability, his ultimate called Primordial Burst. Primordial Burst blasts the target for a ton of AP damage. Like, literally, with a full build Vigar, you're going to be doing anywhere from, like, 1,400 to 2,000 damage with this. And it blasts the target for a, a ton of magic damage, plus 80% of the target's AP. So you literally will just blow up AP carries with this, but you can also blow up AD carries because of the, just how much damage it does. In addition to that, some of the other stuff that Vigar brings is a... Area of Effect Stun. Basically what this does is it summons this little, um, it, it summons like this sort of small arena type of thingy that you can pass through and your allies can, but if enemies try to pass through it, they get stunned. So it's very, very strong. Um, your W is a Area of Effect. Uh, it, after a short delay at the target area, a mass of dark matter falls from the sky and does a ton of damage. And finally, your Q is called Baleful Strike, and it does a damage to a single target. Now, what you want to do with your Q in lane is you want to kill enemy minions with it. And the reason for this is because every time you kill a minion with this ability or a champion, you get free passive AP that infinitely stacks. Sort of like uh, Nasus's Siphoning Strike. So, Vigar is really good at just blowing up squishy targets. Next we have Victor. Victor is another champion that I think is very underrated and very strong. He also has a surprising amount of bursts. Now, what are Victor's abilities? His passive is Evolving Technology. He starts with something called a Hex Core, which gives him passive AP and can be built into an item. Unfortunately, you can't get rid of this, so the one disadvantage of Victor is that it limits item builds. You have three choices for what you can evolve it into. However, there's only one real good choice. And that is, uh, it's basically it's, uh, this death, um, death core or something. And what it does is it lets your E do more damage. Next we have his Q, which is power transfer. You deal damage to a single target and then also give yourself a shield. Your W is called gravity field. You put down this gravity field in a moderate area. It's an AoE. And then it slows enemies in, him, in it. And then after a short delay, will also stun them if they stay in it. Your E fires out a death ray that passes through enemies and does a fair amount of damage. Finally, your ultimate is Chaos Storm. You summon a movable storm at the location. It initially does uh, damage and silences enemies, and then it will proceed to follow the target, or you can manually move it, and it deals to damage to enemies around it. So, I like Victor. Victor's very fun. 
Next we have Vladimir. Vladimir is a tanky mage, again like Swain, he's very sustaining. And the reason he's uh, tanky is because of this passive. Every 40 points of bonus health grants Vladimir 1 ability power and every 1 point of ability power gives Vladimir 1.4 bonus health. And it does not stack with itself, but it does give you a bunch of free health basically. Your Q does damage to a single target and also heals him. Your W is Sanguine Pool, and what this does is that it will it turns you into a pool of blood that you can you move as, but it makes you untargetable. So it's very good for getting you out of a sticky situation. Your E does damage and gives you a stack. Uh, does damage in the area around you and gives you a stack of tides of blood. What this does is it makes your tides of blood cost more health. But it also uh, increases healing you receive. Um, all of Vladimir's abilities cost health, so that's something to know. Finally, your ultimate is a uh, is an area of effect tar uh, target area ability. It applies a dot to all enemies in the area when it uh, when you use it, and then after a short delay, it will detonate, dealing damage to them. But while they have the dot on them, it also increases damage they take from all sources. So very good ability. Vladimir overall is a fairly decent mage. You normally see him top, not mid, however, that's something to know. Next we have Zareth. I'm not a fan of Zareth. I think he's really underwhelming because he's very dependent on having his ultimate up. But he's very pokey. Like, he has some really long range poke. Um, what his passive does is that uh, you get 15% 15 of your ability power as armor. So, makes you a little bit tanky. Your Q uh, fires a long range beam of en energy dealing magic damage to all targets in a line. It has a brief delay as you fire it. Your W is Locus of Power. It roots you to the ground, but increases the range on all your abilities by a fairly significant amount. And also gives you passive uh, magic penetration while in this form. Your E is called Mage Chains. It does damage to a single target and also, then also marks them. And if they're hit with another ability, it triggers the mark, stunning them. Finally, your ultimate does damage in an area, a uh, targeted area, and you can use it three times. So you can nuke a target down really well with this, but then you don't really do a lot of damage. And that's unfortunate. That's the one problem with Zareth, I think. Next, we have Zakes. Zakes is probably one of the funnest, if not the funnest, APs to play, just because he's just so enjoyable to be around. And it's just Riot did really good on his, just his whole aesthetic, his whole personality, it just fits. Now, Zakes throws bombs, his passive is short fuse, every 12 seconds, Zakes' uh, next basic attack deals bonus magic damage. It's good, and then whenever Zakes uses an ability, it also reduces the cooldown on this. It's a good poke ability, also does damage to tower, so it lets you push hard. Your Q is called Bouncing Bomb. You throw a bomb that bounces until it either hits a target or reaches the end of its range. Um, very good ability, very good for harassing, very good for firing. Your W is called Satchel Charge. You throw a Satchel Charge uh, to the target location. And then after a delay, or you can reactivate it. And you can reactivate it mid-flight as well. It will explode, dealing damage to enemies and knocking back you and your enemy if you're within the range. So it's very good for keeping enemies off of you or escaping. Your E puts a uh, bunch of mines on the ground in a targeted area. They'll persist for a short duration before expiring. And enemies who step on the mines will take damage from the mines and also be slowed. Each mine does damage, so the ability doesn't do a lot of damage unless they trigger a lot of the mines. But it slows them and lets you basically get a free Q on them. Finally, your ultimate is called Mega Inferno Bomb. That name alone is awesome. And what it does is it's a fairly long range targeted area ability and you throw a huge bomb to the location. It deals more damage to targets in the center and less damage as they go out of it. So it's very good for helping bot or top lane if uh, from roaming mid. He's all, again, he's an overall very, very fun and enjoyable champion. And we have our last mage, Zyra. Zyra is a very strong, albeit interesting mage. Her main mechanic is focused around this ability called Rampant Growth. Rampant Growth puts a seed at the area and it persists for 30 seconds before expiring. Now what you can do is you can use uh, either your Q or E to trigger these seeds. 
and depending on which one you use will make it spawn into a plant. If you trigger your Q on these, then it, uh, you will spawn a thorn spitter, which is a fairly lengthy range uh, plant. It will attack nearby enemies, although it prioritizes champions if they're nearby. Your Q also does damage to targets. Um, your Q has a short delay, so what you can do is you can target the area with your Q, then put both of your uh, seeds down on it, and it will trigger deal damage to probably your enemy champion, and then also trigger the plants which will start attacking them. Your E sends out a fairly moderate range skill shot uh, line, uh, and it shoots at these roots. They pass through enemies, <clears throat> and all enemies hit will be rooted. And if it hits your seeds, it will spawn them into um, vine lashers that will deal damage and slow enemies nearby. The vine lashers have a very, very short range, like almost melee range. So they're good, but they're very situational. Finally, your ultimate is called Strangle Thorns. Fairly large uh, and long range target area ability. Um, these vines will creep out, deal damage to targets hit, and then after a uh, brief delay, they will also snap shut and knock enemies up. So, very good initiate or follow up tool as well. Finally, her passive is Rise of the Thorns. If she dies, she returns in a plant form, and she can fire uh, a skill shot out after a two second delay. And what the skill shot does is it passes through enemies and deals true damage to them. So very good if you die and you need to clean up in the team fight. Anyways, that's a look at all the mages. I hope you enjoyed this look and I hope it gives you an idea of what some of them can do. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will see you all next time when we look at our marksmen. See ya.